Hello, today is the uh, 29th of September 2011 and within this video we'll take a look at the silver market, move into volatility, nine reasons why the stock market isn't going to do so well the next uh, week or two and uh, some volatility in silver. We'll, we'll get started right now. This chart is the six hour chart which managed to come up to this level which was above this line and you'll see within the next chart that this line had more prevalence than this one did so it was not a surprise that it pierced above the 3170 Fibonacci level managed to go up to this uh, five, peer, five day average front weighted average of closes and it's been riding this as resistance ever since now I was stating 3050 to be an area I would like to find a support because if you have a situation on a washout where you have a nice little rally, what I would prefer not to see is that it does not retrace 61.8 but around 38.2 and this is about a 50% retracement so uh, right now it's holding along this level if it continues to do so, really holding up about this 28 level breaking this trend line and uh, getting above a 61.8 percent level from the 33 and a half highs and what is currently now around 29 and a quarter lows. We can see it a little bit better within here because the previous level of support acted as resistance back uh, just recently. Therefore for this to be a failed move, we want to see is what we did see is that it does not break bigger levels. When you break above this, then you can start to say signs that uh, we can see a possible failed move from a fast move. But like I mentioned, a lot of times these things do take a long time to heal. Moving on to volatility. This is the six hour volatility chart. If you are not familiar with it, what I do is I take the difference from the open or excuse me from the high and the low of each six hour period and what the difference from the lowest and highest point is up top. And this is a front weighted average 20 and 80 period or 5 and 20. Now one thing I was mentioning a few months back that I'd be looking for is for it to have a clear break above this 5% mark and then use 5% as support. It never did use the 5% in this area as support, but it is doing that so far right now as we can see in here. And that's, a, that's a little scary just to uh, let you know that the market action is doing a behavior like that. Now as far as the bottom part of it, I can make a, a, a line in here. If it just goes sideways within this area, that's volatile because yes, up downs can say that or up moves can say that the market's more volatile as down moves say it's less volatile. But when you're already at a higher level and you stay within that high le higher level, that's just telling you that volatility isn't going anywhere as of now. Yesterday I put up a notepad and I wrote down a few notes and I'm going to do the same thing again and there is a lot of them. And uh, you can read along with me and uh, the first part will be just some little things that I like to use as myself as way of being a winner within this type of game. This can work for pretty much any gambling kind of game or just life in general. I don't care if I am right or wrong with my predictions on direction or results. It is useful and harmful to dwell on your losing picks and trades. It is useless and harmful to brag on your winning picks and trades. And I put ego in here because once you let the ego get the best of you, goodbye. I can have a winning play and not be happy because I am lucky with my well, I am lucky while making a trading or betting mistake. That can be something that happens. And if you see that you say to yourself, man, I shouldn't have done that. Thank God I got lucky. And I can have a losing plan and be happy because my analysis before execution was correct or stellar. It is important to review your play after the game is over and analyze your methodology. When results are not satisfactory, be very open with your methodology. 
Gambling gods seem to give very big up and down swings that even I cannot comprehend. When things go really bad, do not panic and stay calm. Proper decisions occur when you are focused. When things are going really good, do not get euphoric and stay calm. Proper decisions okay. Proper decisions occur when you are focused. Emotions are part of being human. When you notice the euphoria panic, then take some time, calm down before executing any executions. It is important to stay focused and confident within your abilities. When you reach a moment of Zen, and I don't know what I can put this ultimate zone and God like, and I hate to use the word God like because if you don't, we, we, if we can't define what God is, how can you put it in? That's my belief on that. But when I talk about the moment of Zen, that just tells you you are in an ultimate zone. And, and when you're in this case, nothing can go wrong, basically. When in the moment of Zen, it is very hard to get out of it, even if you try. And I don't know why you'd want to try, but a couple times I did and it didn't work. Let's just put it that way. The moment of Zen is a rare occurrence and can't be forced upon. Well, if it, if it can be forced upon, I don't know how. Let's put it that way. When you leave the moment of Zen, it can be very catastrophic. The bigger the Zen, the bigger it will be. Like a hangover, it is short, sweet, and rough. And the situation is when, you know, things are always going right and then you get out of it. I've had, uh, it, it's been difficult coming out off of that situation. And this is stuff that can be used if you're picking stocks, picking sport games, or even trying to win a baseball game. These are, I think, very good things. Now let's get on to reasons why the market is going lower in October. I got nine of them. Number one, what did I say in August about the pattern? What I remember was A, precursor to, to you know what, volatility to peak after Labor Day. Basically, within the stock market, what it ended up doing was it uh, pretty much had a big crash and then it's been just doing this choppy sideways action, pretty much. And what I was saying back then was, well, we have this unusual volatility for when it's not supposed to happen. and well, it's probably going to settle down for a bit before, well, things really get going. Well, it's pretty much done exactly as I thought. Remember when I said a failed move was guaranteed for the market? Well, oftentimes failed moves cause fast moves, or faster than it was. Now, what I mean by this, I'm just going to, again, hand draw the chart. You had the 2007 top that uh, pretty much had a big crash, and and then it managed to come up. So the question was, was it A, was the selling the failed move, or B, was the breakout the failed move? And if it's the breakout, then what happens on a failed move? It can create fast moves in the opposite direction. The longer you're in a range, the bigger the breakout breakdown tends to be. And I think you can also say the more volatile the range, the bigger it would be also. It's a pretty volatile range that's been going on the last couple of months on the stocks, last six weeks or so, as well as, well, we'll wait and see, because I could see a big breakdown within it. Number four, play the trend. WebBot is hot right now, and they don't see things going well for Shocktober. So if they're using the name Shocktober, you can pretty much get an idea from what they're saying. Number five, video from BBC with a thing called hedge funds and then ironic to occur at the moment with what was said. Now hedge funds was put in here because well hedge funds they're, they 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 can pull out of stocks very simple and don't be surprised if they do that once again. Ironic to occur at this moment because it seems everything's playing out together within the Wall Street Occupy Wall Street that is. And this uh, video got a lot it got very viral to say the least. When I watched it myself, I was expecting a lot more to be honest with you. But uh the the girl at BBC asked, "Well, how does this help us?" Well, I'll tell you how it helps you. One, you know it's a casino now. So if you're playing a casino game, learn how to play the casino game. If you don't think you're good, don't play. Plain and simple. If you want to short the stock market, it can be done. Learn how to do it if you want to play. That's it. Number six, 20,000 is the average puts for the S&P 500. If 
but for next month, it's now over 2 million, 100 times higher, unprecedented, to say the least. Number seven, timing with Occupy Wall Street and possible Mayan end date 10-28-2011. As far as this end date is concerned, it's been a very confusing situation because sometimes it feels so strong, sometimes it feels so weak. I, I, I'm not just going to, I'm going to wait for the signs that I'm waiting for, for things to get extreme and they're getting close. October is overall down a uh, period and three previous major crashes occurred within October, 1929, 1987, and 2008. Number nine, the CAPE index, which is cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio. And it's at 23 and a half. I don't even know what the chart looks like, to be honest with you. But from this article, you can Google search this uh, stock crash indicator, same as October 1929, and just type a few of those in. And this article would state that this is the fifth time that the level has been what is considered this high. The late 1920s, right before the crash. The mid-1960s, before the silent crash. The late 1990s, before the start of the next silent crash in 2007, which was uh, the big move last year. So those are the reasons why I would consider the markets to be heading lower next month. There is no guarantees silver will crash with the Dow. If this happens or it crashes, it just may be a dip. Ways this can happen are days like the following. So I wrote a bunch of days in here, nine different days. SI stands for silver, DG, DJIA stands for the Dow Jones. So you have a day where silver's up 8% and maybe the Dow's down 1. Well, we look at the precursor or the start of the summer, we were seeing days where the Dow was down 3 and silver was up 4 and 5%. So it can very easily have opposite days. Number two, silver down 2%, Dow down 4%. Next day, silver down 5%, Dow down 3%. It's very common for the silver to have major Dow moves. And Well, the next day the Dow goes up, so does silver. The next day the Dow is flat and silver has a nice okay up day. Then boom, things go down on day six. Dow down 11%, silver down 9%. Day seven, Dow's down another 6%, silver's down another 4%. Next day, Dow Jones pretty much does nothing, and silver has an okay up day. And then the major crash on day 9, silver down 14%, Dow, Dow Jones down 17%. In this scenario, silver was down approximately 16% throughout the entire 9 days. And from, say, $30, that would be about a $25 bottom. Let's assume it was $30 when this all started. And from the Dow, let's assume it's 10,000, it would be down to 6,500 because that would be a 35% loss. These levels can be more extreme. Instead of 17% down on the Dow, maybe it's 26, and maybe silver's down 20. You know what? I don't know, but there are many ways where the markets can go down together and one can overperform the other. Another example of this is in 2008 because silver bottomed in October, stocks bottomed in March. So... Again, maybe they all bottom in October again. The Dow bottoms at, say, 7,500. Silver at 25. But that's the silver bottom. Next thing you know, when the Dow is bottoming a few months later at 4,000, well, silver reached new new bottom at 30. That could always be possible. Now, as far as playing these puts, it's a gambling game. And these were yesterday's. They're all cheaper right now because the market's up right now. But these are possible ways of playing the market because I want to refer back to the put options from in here. The put options that uh, these ones in here are ones I don't understand as well. It's from the future markets. I don't play them, nor do I know much about them, but I think they're very similar to the ones that I would know about, which are the ones on the equity market. Now, WebBot does create or predict a derivative collapse, which is what this is part of. So let's go through a few examples. I got the first one, Bank of America, October $5 put. 17 cents. Now, 17 cents is how much you pay for the option. But assuming that uh, at the end of uh, October, when the well, around the 20th of October, when the, it uh, is done, if, if Bank of America is two dollars a share, you just turn 17 cents into three dollars, basically. That's pretty good. And we'll get even more into that on really the third one. The second one, 
is BAC December $4.24. Now the only reason I put this in is just to show you it's a time decay. And the more days that go on, the more it loses just because of actual time. The third one, JP Morgan October $15 at 3 cents. This is one that usually never wins but can hit huge because if the market's down to 13, you just turn 3 cents into $2 basically. Plain and simple. There's a lot of commissions. And, and I'm not playing this game because, quite frankly, I know who the bookies happen to be. The next one, FAS, uh, October, $4.10. These things are bound to go to nothing. This one here is the safe uh, leverage play, which is SPY, the S&P 500, for October 150. And basically, you're paying $34.80 a share for a, a strike price of 150. So the market can still go up and you won't lose everything. And if the market goes down, you won't make as much. That's pretty much how it works. So basically, with the S&P 500 roughly at around like what 114 or something, if it goes up big to 130, you're gonna basically lose half. Or it's gonna go down to 20 basically. If it goes down to 100, then you'll go up to like 50. So you can't make or lose as much, but that's like more of the safer play. I got Goodyear tires, eight dollars. These are ones that I think are pretty good. Uh, then you got SLV, October $22, which is $0.41. Cents. So if you're thinking that it's going to go down to $20, and uh, SLV are 2.3% 2, 2, 2 lower than that to begin with. So that would be like, uh, well, 20 again. This would be one particular one way that it would work. And on the bottom, I have January 2012 SLV call option, $70.07. Look at the math on this one and how useless this bet would be. Silver breaks out like the web bot say. You got the $20 days, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so silver's now at $100 an ounce. That means you can turn $0.07 cents into $30. Well, the question is, good luck trying to execute it, and then if you can time it well, take the fiat money that you want, pay your taxes, all that kind of stuff, you got to get out of that dollars, got to get out of those dollars now and buy something. It may not be very easy. Now, what I didn't write down on here that I do want to talk about right now and uh, I'll get a chart for this one, is that of uh, the, 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 uh, buying on dips. And, and Let's hang on. And it isn't really buying on dips, but it's uh, profit taking or swing trading. Let's assume when you were here that uh, you sold all your silver because you felt it was going to top. And then you're right, so you buy back in. That's what you call winning your bet and being able to have extra silver. Many people or the majority just took the hit and they're just going to wait it out basically. If that's the case, if you're playing for me for the silver price to go to div zero, which means if you look at your piece of paper, your paper rectangle where you have a one on your one dollar bill, replace the one with a zero and that's pretty much how you get div at zero. That means currencies are dead, silver has to get revalued within real assets somehow, and the silver value would most likely be transmuted within the gold to silver ratio. Okay. But let's assume now, because I had one person mention to me that they want to sell all their silver in here because they feel that it's going to go way, way lower, maybe to that 21 level. Here's the problem with this, though. Let's assume that you're right. Let's assume that you know it's going to $21. So you sell all your silver, every single bullion piece that you got, and you watch it go lower to 21 inch October. Here's the problem. Good luck buying it back. Because when I was talking about the disconnect, I really thought the disconnect level would work between the 25 and 26 level. Anything breaking below that is when it starts to get crazy. Therefore, from like say 22 to 25, you would notice local dealers are already shut out. That's the disconnect for local dealers has already begun. But as far as different small type of dealers on the internet and different places, they're out. Now, Atmex will still work out because within Atmex, they don't care anything about the price because they short the market when they buy and they cover the shorts when they sell. Thus, what that means in simple terms is they only make the commission and whether the price goes up or down, it means absolutely nothing to them. But the thing is, is inventory stockouts would mean something. And as the price was in the area going from 23 to 20, my best guesstimation is that they are sold out when this comes into play. Because people talk about, oh, I want to buy $10 silver. Well, good luck on that one, and thank you for watching.